the American people spoke very loudly and put Donald Trump back in office. What is this going to mean for Israel? All right, my friends, thank you for dropping by for yet another edition of Israel Frontline Update. I am coming from an undisclosed location called a Hampton Inn in Toronto. What will the Trump doctrine on his second term, what is this going to mean for Israel, the greater Middle East, and our world? And the repercussions are already happening. So we're gonna dig into it right away. Glad you're dropping by. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the share button. Get the word out about Jerusalem-centered Christianity as we see every single day unfolding in front of our eyes that indeed the entire planet swirls around this tiny, tiny piece of land called Jerusalem and most specifically the Temple Mount. The democratic process and the American people spoke very loudly and put Donald Trump back in office. What does that mean for Jerusalem? What does that mean for Israel? Well, first of all, let's look and see. Donald Trump had a 71% approval rating among Israelis, his highest rating anywhere in the world. So Israel highly regarded Donald Trump's ability to handle the complex multifaceted issues of the Middle East. Why was he so popular? What was it about his first term that made him so popular in Israel? Just a quick review. Number one, he recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Now, you would think this would be obvious since uh, King David established Jerusalem as the capital 3,000 years ago. Since for 2,000 years in the diaspora, Jews have been praying towards Jerusalem since there has always been an uninterrupted, uninterrupted 3,000 year presence of Jews in Jerusalem, even during times of dispersion. There always have been a remnant living there. You can go back to Nehemiah, right? Hopefully you've read Rise and Rebuild, my new book. And Nehemiah chapter one opens. Nehemiah says, my brother Hanani and some of the brethren, those who survived the exile in Jerusalem. So there always have been Jews living in Jerusalem, but Donald Trump recognized Jerusalem again as the capital. Now folks, we have to remember a few weeks ago, CBS News was exposed, one of their highest ranking officials putting in a memo, hey, don't mention, do not say the words, Jerusalem is in Israel. This is CBS News. I still haven't heard how that all worked itself out, but this is the level of propaganda and the level of positioning that happens in the public sphere on a constant basis. So he recognized Jerusalem as the capital. He moved the American embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And most importantly, really, he brokered the Abraham Accords. Now, I remember when Jimmy Carter was president going all the way back. And of course, before you saw heroic Anwar Sadat, who paid with his life for the peace that still exists between Israel and Egypt. But we've really only had a basic tacit peace with Egypt and Jordan. It was only under the Trump presidency that these other moderate, modern, progressive Muslim states began to normalize relationships. Now, here is the real key, and I want you to listen to this, and I want you to watch for this. The key is going to be Saudi Arabia. I'm telling you, keep your eyes on Saudi Arabia, keep your prayers on Saudi Arabia, because Saudi Arabia in this moment is going to become the core player, I would say not only in the Middle East, but in the world, because Saudi Arabia is stuck. It is the center geographically of Islam, right? You have Mecca and Medina, both based in Saudi Arabia. So Saudi Arabia is the you know, the de facto Vatican, right? It, it's the repository of Islam globally. And so they feel the weight of that responsibility. And yet, right near them, you have Iran who is vying to be the theocratic ruler of Islam. 
So you have this incredible power struggle going on right now. You've got Saudi Arabia that culturally, historically, religiously has been the geopolitical religious center of Islam and wants to maintain that positioning. And yet you have Iran, almost nuclear, actively creating proxy terrorist cells, Hezbollah, uh, Hamas, in collusion with the Houthis and others around the world. And so you have Iran wanting to come into collusion with North Korea, with Russia, maybe with China, and yet you've got Saudi Arabia saying, no, we're the epicenter of Iran. If Saudi Arabia shifts, only, listen to this, it's incredible, only Donald Trump persuaded Saudi Arabia to allow Israel's commercial flights to go through Saudi Arabian airspace in Donald Trump's first term. This was groundbreaking, that Saudi Arabia would allow Israeli planes, planes going to and from Israel, to travel over Saudi airspace. This was a step forward in the thawing of relations. Well, this is where all eyes are going to turn, because if Saudi Arabia shifts, and if Saudi Arabia allows for and accepts the existence of the Jewish state, and even begins to normalize relationship with the, the state of Israel, that will have a domino effect across the rest of the Muslim world, and Iran will finally be isolated. And we will finally understand <clears throat> that the most rogue, evil, and dangerous actor on the world stage is Iran. And so the fact that Trump was able to do that in his first term, this is why in Israel he was so highly regarded. Not because he was a menacing threat to anybody, but to the contrary, he was normalizing. He was normalizing relationship with the Arab world, and in particular this example I'm using, Saudi Arabia. Also during his first time, he withdrew from the Iran nuclear deal, which is a disaster, an utter absolute disaster. And he imposed maximum pressure on Iran. Folks, Iran was almost bankrupt. Iran was almost bankrupt. And the people of Iran are beautiful people. Do you know how many Iranian friends I have? Dozens. I, I, just, had, I just had dinner in Los Angeles with beautiful, beautiful Iranian Persian family in Los Angeles just a few weeks ago. The, the Iranian people are beautiful people. They are studious. They are hardworking. They have deep commitment to their families. They're some of the most gracious people on planet Earth, and yet they are being ruled over by these theocratic fascists. And so when Trump, in his first term, took that hard position against Iran, you saw the other actors in the region who are very nervous about Iran have appreciation. Now, we want to move quickly toward his next term, but I do want to say this. He also canceled $200 million to UNRWA. UNRWA is the most corrupt. It is coming out day by day by day. The number of, uh, of terrorists or terrorist enablers and sympathizers that exist within UNRWA. Every day you see more and more of this in the news. And so Donald Trump canceled your tax dollars, your tax dollars, my tax dollars going to pay an organization that is so obviously morally bankrupt and so obviously working against American interests in the Middle East. Now, very quickly, uh, we've begun to see Donald Trump's cabinet in this new administration. And you, what is, you know, the old adage, you can tell a person by those who surround them. So we see immediately Donald Trump producing an incredibly, incredibly strong cabinet. Of course, he reached out to our dear friend, my dear friend, Governor Mike Huckabee, who I immediately emailed and congratulated, and he emailed me back moments later. We're so pleased and so proud for Governor Mike Huckabee, our dear friend. He's been a friend of Eagles Wings for probably 15 years. And we're thrilled for him and we look forward to working with him in his new position. But also, Elise Stefanik, 
uh, as the next U.S. ambassador to the United Nations. This is a game changer. She is incredible. Uh, and you see just an incredible, incredible team being built. And so um, the new Trump uh, cabinet is coming together day by day. It, not a moment too late because all across our world right now, I'm telling you, the world has lost its mind with attacks on Jews, attacks on Christians, attacks on moderate Muslims. What we saw in Amsterdam 10 days ago, horrific. And it is absolutely necessary that we stand strong, centered in our covenantal belief of this. Every human being is created in the image of God. Every human being, black, white, brown, Asian, Hindu, Muslim, Buddhist, atheist, every human being is deserving of core human rights. And we're living in a world where radicalized Islam is denying those rights, denying those basic fundamental human rights to their own citizens and trying to export that to the West. And somehow they've come into collusion with the far left, with the radical woke left, and it is time to raise up a standard. So I pray that you're getting educated. I pray that you're getting loud. And this has been just a glimpse at what the new Trump presidency is going to mean for the Middle East. I fully expect there to just be sweeping changes that are going to ha happen across the board. It's gonna be an extraordinary time to watch. So get educated, get involved. Go to bonhoeffer.org, sign the Bonhoeffer Declaration. Hopefully, listen, 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 listen. I hope you're starting to get the Bonhoeffer stickers. If you are a donor of Eagle's Wings, you've been sending them out free in all of our mailing. If not, email us. I want to see Bonhoeffer stickers all across America. We've got two different designs. I want you to put them everywhere, especially on college and university campuses. Get the Bonhoeffer stickers out there everywhere. Bonhoeffer.org. We are being called into alignment. Listen to me. Your life, your family, your church, your ministry, your calling is being called into alignment for such a time as this. There has been this incredible shift that has happened. And so let's, as Americans right now, take a place of joining together, standing together, walking together, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. That's our national motto. Not out of many, many. Hello? Out of many, we were brought forth as one. That was the beauty of America. We had our backgrounds. Give me your tired, tired masses, huddled masses, yearning to be free, right? Statue of Liberty. We, we came from many backgrounds, but there was the joy that we found a desire to live as Americans with liberty and justice for all. So let's recapture those ideals and let's see and pray that God gives an amazing four years of victories in the Middle East as we pray for our new president, President Donald Trump. God bless you. I'll see you next week at Israel Frontline.